So when Sneha asked me this, I was reminded of my parents who come to me and say, like, all this is okay, ma'am, but my child has to sit in class, right? How do I teach him that? So for you specifically, for parents who are wondering how to make your child sit in the classroom, this is for you. Here are three tips. The first one is consider, persist, accommodate. So if you are inquisitive about what this is about and how to help your child, then watch this video. So first consider two things, the age of your child and their physiological state. So when I say age, you have to understand there are two things. There is the chronological age, like, you know, the child is three or four or five. And there is the developmental age, that is how much their cognitive abilities and their speech and language abilities have developed. So consider both and think, is your child developmentally ready to sit down and pay attention for a task? So this will start in children from the developmental age of three, when they can sit for five minutes or, you know, seven minutes for an activity. Again, not more than that. Even these activities are generally things that the child really likes, even if not really, but at least moderately likes that activity. The second thing to consider will be the physiological state, meaning the internal body state. Is your child well fed and are they feeling very sleepy after a full meal or did they not have a good nutritional intake for the day or are they a little high energy? So did they get some physical activity during the day and did your child have good bowel movements during the day? All these regulate the body's hemostasis or our ability to stay calm and neutral. So just make sure your child has enough sleep, nutrition and all these things are covered before you begin teaching. Now the second thing is to persist. What does this mean? Actually it's expanded a little bit meaning practice and persist. Now discipline is a skill that is difficult for everybody, even myself included. So we all need you know, motivation, we are all trying to get that passion and willpower. But even for children it's difficult. But what really helps is practice. So you cannot start on day one and expect your child to sit down for half an hour. Start slow and keep it consistent here. So what does consistent mean is you sit down for homework or daily learning practice at a specific time in the day. So when you go to school, also don't initially expect your child should be able to sit. Give them some time and let them expect, begin to expect the routine and predictability of the school environment. And then they will slowly understand. And persist, meaning keep persisting your child, come and sit. This does not persist, does not mean force or coerce, but it means that if you invite your child to sit down for an activity and they are not interested to sit down, they get up and move away. So you think, was my activity correct for my child? Sometimes we have sensory seekers or especially tactile seekers who want to keep touching and moving, feeling something as they are learning. They are not able to sit still. So in that case, Make sure your child sits on a therapy ball or they have some fidget item or they're wearing a blanket on them while they're sitting for the task. Um, but practice. So have a consistent time and keep persisting your directions. Even if your child gets up and goes away, give them a few minutes and then again say, let's come back to the table. And even if they get up again, say it, say it again and bring them back. But keep doing this over time and your child will begin to expect, okay, when mommy sits at the table, we are all supposed to sit and do this activity. When teacher asks me to sit, everybody is sitting. This is what we are doing every day. So I guess this is expected and they will start understanding. But don't expect that they will understand all this on day one. Third is accommodate. Now you have to understand that when a child is neurodiverse, it, it literally means that their brain works differently. For a neurodiverse child, there are certain things that is easy, certain things that is difficult. Now if sitting down is difficult for a child, think how you can incorporate movement. Right? So, for example, you're not going to go to a person who has a broken or fractured leg and say you have to walk. Right? You will accommodate them. The same way for a child whose executive functioning is difficult for them. Executive functioning is being able to control your body, control yourself for an activity, pay attention, problem solve, think, reason. So, these are a bit difficult for neurodiverse kids. So, be understanding and accommodate to their needs. Add movement-based activities. Give a lot of breaks for your child. Make sure the sitting environment is very friendly to them. They have what, whatever sensory need they have is satisfied and they are able to be calm in, that, in the moment. So I'm recapping the three tips. The first is to consider the developmental age of your child and your child's physiological state before you ask them to sit down for an activity. The second thing is to keep persisting in sitting even if they keep getting up and be consistent in your instruction, consistent in your time when you ask them to sit. And the third is to be a little bit more accommodative of your child's needs and try to adjust yourself to their needs so that you can teach them effectively.